So this is a really common question that I get asked when I talk about scalp tension. People ask me, but what about hair transplants, right? You take a hair from the back of the head and you put it in the front and apparently that hair just grows perfectly healthy, healthily for the rest of your life, right? So the hair transplant industry has made us believe that transplanted hairs are immune to DHT. So this is basically the counter argument to the scalp tension hypothesis. If you can just take one from the back and put it in the front and it's not affected by scalp tension, then that proves that scalp tension doesn't cause hair loss, right? But as you'll see, there is a bit of a problem, a bit of a glaring issue with this theory. So in reality, those transplanted hairs are not perfectly immune to DHT. In fact, that doesn't even matter. Those transplanted hairs will start thinning unless that patient takes finasteride, right? Unless I've written out here, unless the patient takes finasteride, those hairs will start thinning after five or so years. And this is all whilst the hairs on the back and the sides of the head remain perfectly healthy. So we now have a study on this exact topic. After only four years, 9% had retained the same density. Everyone else had lost density. So almost all hair transplant patients are required to take finasteride indefinitely. And this is to protect both the transplanted hairs and the native hairs from fibrosis. So if you don't know what fibrosis is, it is really, really important that you understand this word. And I'll link to the video down below that you can go and watch and explains exactly what fibrosis is. And you can go and watch the full presentation. So without, fa without finasteride or you know a DHT blocker, because the DHT blocker will stop that process of fibrosis, the transplanted hairs will start thinning. Right, so this was the study I mentioned before. And you know you can just look anywhere on basically a hair loss forum and see that people are now complaining that their transplanted hairs are not lasting forever, right? Why have I seen multiple people say that hair transplants are not permanent? And I, I mentioned this point on one of our other videos and you know there were lots of comments basically saying, you're 100% correct, I was sold the story of no more drugs, non-sensitive DHT implanted follicles. 10 years later, it looks like, ish. So what's really interesting is that you can understand this concept even further and you can say that larger graphs actually last longer than smaller ones. And that's because larger graphs have more of the surrounding tissue to resist scalp compression and blood flow issues around the hair follicle bulb, right? So you need to understand this in the context of fibrosis because that surrounding tissue around the hair follicle graft is what protects it uh, for a few years, for like five to 10 years from fibrosis. So just, just a small point, right? I, I don't make this point to say that hair transplants are a bad choice. I, I think they're a great choice for many people, if, especially if you've, you know, you've lost hair, then you've found a hair care routine that works and you've stabilized your hair loss and you just wanna fill back in the hair that you've lost. They're, they're a great option. But just don't go thinking that there's anything special about the hairs that get transplanted. They are all the same, no matter which part of the scalp they come from. It is the position on the scalp that is critical um, a critical factor of whether the whether the follicle you know lives healthily or starts to miniaturize and that's all because it comes down to scalp compression inflammation and fibrosis so if you don't understand these concepts you need to go and watch the other videos that i've linked down below and just to hammer home on this point of larger versus smaller graphs um because this is really important right so one of the comments we got and you know, I'm just picking a comment out of many different ones, but you can go and investigate this yourself scientifically. I can attest to the fact that the larger hair grafts last longer, whilst the smaller FUE don't last long at all. I've had both. And this is why, basically. So when you get a hair transplant, you don't they don't just take out the hair follicle itself, right? Um it's the hair follicle is it's a mini organ. It's surrounded by these complex structures such as the erector pili muscle and the sebaceous gland. So they need to, they take the graft, right? It contains the surrounding tissue and these three distinct layers, like I've talked about in the other videos, the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis, or they call it the subcutaneous tissue. But there's all this surrounding tissue around it, right? And you can see that in this real life, life graph. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can see this area around the surrounding tissue. And what you can see is the larger graph size, they have more surrounding tissue. And when you understand fibrosis, you see that fibrosis sets in and it creates this scar tissue, disorganized collagen that um, compromises the layered structure and it basically strangles the hair follicle. So you can see that if fibrosis, you know, is uh, sets in, then this 
these larger graph sizes will maintain their structure uh, and their growth space and their blood supply better than these singular ones. And, and that's, that's just because the fibrosis is, you know, setting in, in the surrounding tissue and compromising the hair follicle. So that's why those larger graphs last longer, as we can see. So hopefully that kind of made sense. And you can see why hair transplants actually prove that scalp tension is the most important factor because scalp tension leads to scalp compression, which leads to inflammation. And then in the presence of DHT, that leads to fibrosis. And then fibrosis basically reduces the blood supply and growth space of the hair follicle. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Go and watch the other videos. If you want to watch the full presentation, I'll link that down below. If you want to watch the other mini little videos, I'll also link them down below.